Now today's video is about me camping gear, what I use um, when I go off on my motorcycle. Now, basically it's very basic stuff I use. Now, what I've got is a two-man tent and um, I've had this one I'd, just over 10 years now, believe it or not. Um, it's never leaked on me. Uh, it's easy to set up. It's only a two-man tent. Um, it's, it's, an e it's an eager two. Um, it is a bit cramped for space when you've got your motorcycle gear with you and the crash helmet and your boots and bits and pieces. So I always tend to load up my top boxes as much as I can before I settle down for the night. But saying that, um, I'd always use my motorbike gear as in my trousers, my jacket, and I actually even wear my balaclava to be quite honest when I'm sleeping at night. Yeah, so this is my two man tent. Um, I've had it about 10 years, which I've already said that. It does the job, it's very small. Um, and it is 2.8 kg. She is actually a bit heavy um, when you've got your pegs and your bits and pieces inside it. And your, it it's not the lightest of tents, but it's the sort of tent now I could nearly set up in the dark because I've had it that long. Something else I'd always bring with me, and that's a ground sheet which is just a fraction smaller than the tent that the water doesn't actually um, come down the tent onto the ground sheet and go under. So this, this ground sheet, what I'm actually using, um, it just goes under the tent only just to help to stop a bit of cold dampness or whatever, because um, I never do seem to go camping in good weather for some reason, or, you know, a bit of a nut job really. But it's just the way it falls when you're off from work, I suppose. So, um, yeah, I do have just a basic cheap ground sheet, what I picked up in a, just a small little convenience local store, really, like a DIY place. Now, when it comes to me sleeping pattern, um, normally you kind of wear yourself out till you fall asleep in a tent because... You know, it's not the comfortablest of places, is it? Especially when you're cracking on on your my age. Um, was, I, was I 27 last birthday? No. No. Late 50s. Anyway, I've got this um, little foam mat. Now... Basically, it does nothing for comfort. Absolutely nothing whatsoever for comfort. But I try to lay on it. I end up rolling off as, probably as soon as I go to sleep, to be quite honest. Because I wake up as stiff as can be with aches and pains. But if you can manage to wait on it all night, it actually it helps with the heat. So that's just a basic sometimes but not always um i've got this lilo which is a blow-up bed now when do i use that well if i go camping with someone else obviously not in the same tent but what I have, if i go camping was i always take this and i pull it out at the last minute just to sort of rub their nose in it that i've got a bit more comfort but to be quite honest it's absolutely useless. It makes noise when you turn and twist in the night. And um, I've let the cat out of the bag, really. I prefer the, the old foam map, to be honest with you. But, you know, even if you lay sideways on it and use it as a bit of a pillar or something like that. But will I update it? Nah. Can't be asked. Because... Um, I do like to rough it a bit, to be quite honest, you know, because when you go camping, you're not going to lay in bed all day anyway. You're just going to basically get shelter and jump on the bike and motor on and 
do whatever you have to do. And the chances are when you do get to bed, you've had probably one or two bevies and hopefully it'll help you sleep. This is probably the most modern thing I actually have got. And I picked this up local in a place called The Range. Um, I can't remember the price of it. it was, it's only a cheap gadget. Now, it's a light that you can adjust to have the full length like that. So you can have it with just a little bit of light. And in the middle of the night, that actually is a lot of light what comes out. You know, and you can adjust it if you're outside the tent or whatever. Now, if you push the button again, it then comes into a spotlight. So you've got a torch there with two handles, you know, just if you're gallivanting around the place or walking over to the showers or if you're wild camping, obviously you're not going to be walking to any showers. And then if you push the button again, the lights go out and it activates that you can charge your iPhone or your Galaxy phone up to 40% of its charge on a full charge of this. Now this actually unit is actually a rechargeable unit as well. Um, I have never used the outlet but it recommends that it does give you 40% of the charge um, and it's very very light <laughs> very light good one see poet and don't even know it it's very light it's got little brackets or hooks there to hang up or you can have it just lay it down on the ground or because you know when you're in your tent at night it's only for fiddling to find bits and pieces you know you, who actually sleeps with a light on or uses a light you might just use it outside for bits and pieces um, depends if you're wild camping you're not going to really use it at all to, but um, that is a nice bit of kit I actually do like that yeah it is the modernest thing I've got um, so we'll put that there now what else have I got got this here nice little compact box um, watertight obviously it's not watertight if you leave it on its side like that water probably could seep into it but then again it's got a lip you can leave it outside the tent or wherever and just leave it like that till you're ready to use it and as you can see what it is it's a, a fold away cooker now I've actually got two of these one to be sure to be sure right I've got two of these um, and the reason I got the second one because I actually fell in love with it when I first started using it so I thought you know what I'm going to get another one of them just to have it and not only that you can have the kettle boiling while you're also cooking now this is what it looks like when it's set up obviously you, you buy the gas separate and um, obviously you can get a large yeah you can get a, a large gas bottle or the small ones like that depends I'd always carry a spare one anyway now that just screws on there and this is what folds up okay that folds up like that and that goes there they and they all fold up that the it fits into this little box here but I had this one set up just, just to give, give you a demonstration um, now there is a little bit of uh, gas left in this lighter but even if there's not basically I just used the, the spark to ignite it yeah. Yeah. and as you can see you've got the adjustable there to turn it on and off and you can cook on that boil your kettle do what you like um, what you're supposed to do with a cooker now 
this day and age, a lot of people are going for the, the jet cookers because they don't take up much room and you don't have to bring extras with them. Um, it's actually cold here in the man cave at the moment, so I'll leave that on for a few minutes. Now, also what I've got, for each cooker ring, I've got this, and it's got little feet on it what dig into the ground. And that goes around what you're cooking. And with these things here, that actually pushes down into the ground at each end to make it secure to stop the breeze coming blowing this. Otherwise it'll take forever to um, boil a kettle or cook whatever you're doing. Now I've got two of these, one for each little cooker. Um, if the weather's kind of a bit bad, I normally have the two running together that I have the kettle boiling and also the pan as well for the dinner or the breakfast or whatever. But if it's a good day and there's no rush, I just get one out and just use the one. And once the lunch or the dinner's cooked, I automatically put the kettle on straight after that. I can have a, a brew once I've done me cooking. Our old fashion is that. <laughs> right. I bought these roughly the same time as I bought the tent. So I've had these for about 10 years. So they've had a good bit of use out of them. So the lid is actually the frying pan. Okay. So you've got this little handle here, uh, and that's your frying pan. Now I don't know, did you notice on one of my videos when I went to um, the Town Hill Inn, I was actually parked or camping on a bit of a slope and everything was sliding. These and th This system is not ideal unless you've really got flat ground, but I'm actually going to work on a little table about that. And I'll probably put it in another video. Well, not probably, I will put it in another video for you. So this, what I use, is really only good for flat ground. So you've got the... Um, you've got your frying pan. And because I actually don't do ready meals, you've got to have a little bit of butter or a little bit of oil. Unless you're doing your rashers first. And obviously you always get enough rubbish out of a rasher but I love rubbish food that's what gives me the belly but once you've cooked your uh, bacon or nearly cooked it you can throw your eggs in beside it and you might think it's actually a small frying pan but you're only feeding yourself and you're only looking for yourself when you go away on a bike like that um, normally that is if you do have everyone with you then don't be a tight arse and go into a cafe or a restaurant and Look after the lady. Now, so that's the frying pan. And then you've got your kettle. Now all this combined together, it is very, very light. Very, very light. But it's bloody awkward. It's big and awkward. But you know, if you want to do old fashioned stuff, then you've just got to go with awkward. And that sits on there nicely and um, I don't tend to put too much water in that for the main reason enough just for two cups or two cups of coffee tea or whatever and not only that why fill it up and use it because you're only going to use extra gas when it's unnecessary right this is the smallest pan and it's the same handle what does the frying pan as well as all the pots so there you are for the pots so you can cook your pasta in that or boil your eggs or do whatever you like now I actually have been known to boil me eggs in the teapot for what I use for the tea as well I've actually known to do that just to save water or use an extra water because I do always buy bottled water 
on the way to the campsite or wherever I'm camping by a petrol station on the way in. So I try to use the um, water what I use for me eggs, for me coffee or tea. I don't know should you do that. I'm not recommending it in case you bloody poison yourself. It's what I do and what I have done in the past. Then we got the next one up. Now, this one I probably haven't used probably twice since I've had it um, because it's either not big enough or it's too big that kind of way. So this one I use for doing pasta or bits and pieces as I say because I'm normally all on my own. But this one here, the big one, what I have actually been known to do with this one put cooking oil in the uh, bottom of it, warm it up and actually fried in this one um, just in case there's a windshield it, because there's a bit of a, a lid there, a lip um, just don't let the food go too cold and if you're an animal altogether <laughs> like me sit that if there's not too much fat and oil sit that beside you on the grass or wherever have your bread and butter ready if you're into the old bread and butter or margarine whatever your choice is and just make your breakfast rolls or sandwiches straight out of that and it saves you uh, having an extra plate so so that's the cooking side of it. Me Benny cap. It's got three settings and this is a cap what I actually use. I use this nearly every night when I'm actually working um, because not only is it handy for when you're camping and doing something outside to save the uh, battery on that although it's rechargeable you actually charge this and I got this actually a good few years ago on Amazon and if you see that that little bit there you can actually charge that on your laptop or uh, from your phone charger or whatever you can do and you can actually probably charge that as well but because that's a light and that's a light it's pointless really that's really only for a phone backup I'd say um, but I normally charge this once a week and as I say I use it I use this an awful lot um, if you can pick one of them hats up I really do recommend it uh, they are great and if you want you can take that off and put it in your pocket if you're going down to the pub a few beers and you're coming back to your tent you know you've got yourself a nice little light to save getting your mobile phone out which these days they've all got lights on as well so this is actually very handy for that as well right this is another handy glove what I've always got with me now what I normally tend to do with this, I normally roll it up and put it inside me kettle to carry it. Not that it's heavy, but rather than having it tucked away. Um, that glove. If you tend to leave it on um, just while you're cooking, if you are if the ground is uneven or it's a bit blowy it's always handy just to have this and the reason is if that's on and if there's hot water in that or there's fat or it's cooking with that glove I don't know the name of it I don't know the make of it or whatever but you can actually pick that up and you don't actually need that um, as long as you don't forget yourself and use that and just very very handy that is um, it's something I've not used a lot, but when I have used it, it, great job, great job. What do you think, John Joe? You happy with that? 
right uh, now now that's about it really um, I do everything I've got is very very basic and I've, as you see I've done it the old-fashioned way apart from that lamp well guys and girls I hope you found this video a little bit interesting if you're doing things the old way and uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please do so it'd be much appreciated you know um, it's nice to see when you get a new follower or a new subscriber join your channel um, I'm like a kid with a new toy now if you're really feeling brave take your onesie with you